Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjalaya Mall Mahalingam Engineering College, Covid Bunni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Air Compressor. This is lecture number 4 in the Air Compressor. So the topic we are going to discuss in this lecture, the working principle of rotary compressor and the comparison between rotary compressor and the reciprocating compressor. In the earlier lecture, we discussed the single stage reciprocating compressor, multi stage reciprocating compressor, two stage reciprocating compressor and we derived the work done equation for the two types of compressors and we calculated various efficiencies. So, in this lecture, the learning outcome to the student at the end of the lecture, the students will be able to explain the working of rotary compressors and compare the reciprocating and rotary compressors. Rotary compressors are the machine which develop pressure by rotary action of the rotor or impeller. The rotary compressor are also used where a large quantity of air is required at a relatively low pressure. We discussed the earlier lecture the reciprocating compressor and the rotary compressor is another type of air compressor. So, in the earlier the first lecture we discussed we classified the compressor as a rotary compressor and the reciprocating compressor. So, reciprocating compressor are preferred when the quantity of air is less with a higher pressure ratio or a higher pressure rise. Whereas, the rotary compressor they are preferred where we require large quantity of air at lower or relatively low pressure ratio. So, the rotary compressor there are different types root blower, van blower, centrifugal compressor, screw compressor and axial compressor. And here in the rotary compressor the root blower, van blower and the screw compressor they are called as positive displacement machine and the centrifugal compressor and axial compressor are rotary compressor, the non-positive type of compressors. So, in this lecture, we discuss the working of the different types of rotary compressors. The first type is root blower. There are two types of uh, root blowers shown in the diagram. The root blower, it has got rotor, two rotors with lobes. And in the first diagram, there are two rotors with uh, two lobes and here we have three lobes. These projections are called as lobes. And we have a casing, casing of the root blower and uh, the rotor or the lobes are rotating. And here one is driving and another one is driven. And uh, here and the contact is very close and the lobes are always in contact with the casing of the machine and here we have the airtight contact and the rotor is rotating, the lobes are rotating or rotor is rotating. So, the air is entering through the inlet passage and as the air enters here, this is the space available for air. So, the, it occupies the space as the lobe rotates, this lobe will, air will be entrapped between the space. So, here the air is entrapped, as the rotor is rotating, the, en the entrapped air is getting compressed and uh, when the lobe take another position rotated by 90 degree and this air will be exposed to the outlet pa outlet passage and the compressed air will be leaving to the discharge side. And similarly here, so as the lobe is rotating, one is rotor, one is driver ro rotor, another one is driven rotor, the space between these lobes and the casing, this is the space where the air is entrapped and getting compressed and the compressed high pressure air is delivered through the outlet. The advantages of the root blower, the root blower quickly attain the full number of revolutions and the power demand in partial load range is lower. So, it pass when, you, when the compressor is operating at lower pressure, lower than the design value, that is what called as partial load, the power demand is less. The disadvantage, wear on the conveyor pipe or leakage of conveying material will be greater. So, there will be wear because there is a contact between solid, uh, solid surfaces, mechanical surfaces, so there will be wear on the lobe. Noisy operation, so dampers are required because of mechanical contact, there will be more noisy. 
sensitive to foreign material so air cleaning is essential so suppose some dust particles are uh, flowing along with the air and it will damage the surface of the inner surface of the casing as well as the outer surface of the rota after long period of time capacity loss occurs because of wear and tear so there will be loss of capacity next type of blower is called van blower and here again we have a rotor and the rotor is rotating eccentrically so the uh, power is given to the rotor the rotor rotate eccentrically and in the rotor we have here we have six vanes so these are all vanes and they are spring loaded so inside the here in the in this area we will have the spring the spring will make the uh, vanes always in contact with the casing so always in contact with the casing so as the rotor is rotating so the the uh, i mean the vanes will get the, i mean move up and down inside the rotor so the the air enters here through the inlet passage so here the air is collected and through the small space the air is air is as the rotor is rotating this is the area in which the air is entrapped between the casing and the rotor and it is compressed as the rotor is rotating it is compressed and the compressed air is delivered to the outlet so the spring loaded vanes which is always in contact with the casing so the air leakage is prevented and the air is compressed by the rotary action of the rotor and it high pressure air is delivered and uh, next type of rotary compressor is centrifugal compressor so the centrifugal pump we have studied in the earlier semester the same working principle for the centrifugal compressor there are different parts this is air inlet the air is entering at the uh, at the inlet first it is flowing through the impeller the air is flowing through the impeller then next to the impeller we have the diffuser so this is called as band diffuser and next to the diffuser we have the the scroll casing or volute casing so this is volute casing there are three important components the impeller diffuser and volute casing the air enters centrally perpendicular to the plane and the air is first flowing through the impeller so the impeller is connected to the motor so impeller is rotating by it is rotated by the motor the power transmission the mechanical power is imparted to the air by means of the impeller so across the impeller when the air flow through the impeller the kinetic energy of the air is increased so there will be a rise in pressure as well as increase in kinetic energy across the impeller the air with the higher kinetic energy it flows through the diffuser and the volute casing so when the diffuser when the air flow with the higher kinetic energy with the, through the diffuser we know diffuser is the passage which is diverging in nature so the cross sectional area of the diffuser is increasing the air is air velocity is reduced by the diffuser and decrease in velocity is converted into pressure so by means of diffusing action the velocity is decreased and the pressure is increased then further the pressure is occurs in the volute casing so look at the passage so the volute casing the area for the air flow the area for the air flow is gradually increasing and this is also the diffusion of the air is also taking place in the volute casing and the velocity is converted into pressure Pro velocity is changed into pressure so that the air leaves the outlet the pipeline with the higher pressure so the impeller which increases the velocity as well as the pressure the velocity is converted into pressure velocity of the air is converted into pressure by means of the diffuser the band diffuser and volute casing so the high pressure air is delivered to the outlet outlet of the centrifugal compressor the next type of compressor is screw type of compressor so this is also positive displacement type of compressor and this is the simple line diagram and we have detailed diagram here so the air enters here this is the opening for air entry and the air is flowing in the towards the right side so from left side to right side the air is flowing and as the air is flowing the air is entrapped between the screw and the casing the screw it is a simple screw they are rotating one is driving member another one is driven member so the motor is connected to the driving member and the driven member is rotated by the rotating driving screw the air entrapped between the screw and the casing it is compressed so this is the small space available for 
uh, air compression and the compressed air is leaving through the opening on the other side. So this is the detailed diagram. We have pinion gear, we have bearing, male rotor and the female rotor. So we have the cooling jacket. So the air is, uh, because there is the pressure is in the screw compressor is very high uh, across the compressor. So there will be more increase in uh, temperature of the air. So the air to be cooled. So to remove the heat energy of uh, uh, yeah, we are we have the cooling jacket where the water is circulated, and we have the timing gear to adjust the speed and to uh, regulate the quantity of air compressed uh, in the reciprocate in the screw type of compressor. The next type of compressor is axial flow compressor, and here we have the air entry. So inlet casing is there. The air is guided by the guide vanes. And in the axial compressor, we have casing and rotor. So in the rotor, we have the blade. So these are all called as rotor blades. So here we have three rotor blades. And the blades attached to the stator, stator or the casing is called a stator blade. So these are all the stator blade. Now here, one stator and one rotor that constitute the stage. So first stage, second stage, and third stage. We have three stage compressor. As the air enters with the higher, uh, I mean the air is entering here, uh, the, it is guided by the first stator blade, it is guided to the rotor blade, the rotor is rotating, the rotor imparts energy to the air. So the air, velocity of the air or the pressure of the air is increased across the rotor and uh, the velocity, velocity is converted into pressure by means of the stator blade. So the purpose of the stator blade is to guide the air to the next rotor as well as to increase the pressure uh, in the uh, stator blade. So the pressure, so the look at the cross section for the flow, it is gradually decreasing. For the air flow, the cross section is gradually decreasing. So the pressure is increasing and the high pressure air is delivered through the outlet. So this axial compressor, uh, it is very much used in the gas turbine power plant and in the uh, aircraft vehicles. And now we compare the reciprocating compressor and the rotary compressor. So reciprocating compressor is suitable for low discharge of air at a higher pressure, whereas rotary compressor is they are suitable for handling large quantity of air at low pressure. So in the reciprocating compressor, delivery pressure is high as per stage. So for a single cylinder, there will be more delivery pressure. And in the rotary compressor, delivery pressure is low per stage, per rotor or per stage of the rotary compressor. The delivery pressure is low. The air supply is pulsating because of the reciprocating action. The air supply is pulsating. In the case of rotary compressor, the air supply is continuous. The reciprocating compressor operational speed is low, whereas in the rotary compressor, the operation speed is very high, uh, maybe around 3000 rpm. Reciprocating compressor balancing is major problem because of the reciprocating action. There will be more uh, vibration and uh, it is balancing is very difficult whereas in the rotary compressor there is no balancing problem as the component as the rotor is rotating so these are all the differences or comparison between uh, reciprocating compressor and the rotary compressor so we have some reflections for a few questions that we have to answer so in the in the centrifugal compressor the pressure developed depends on impeller tip velocity inlet temperature type of impeller all the above. So centrifugal compressor, so it depends on all the parameters. So all the parameters are influencing the pressure rise across the centrifugal compressor. Which compressor is wrongly listed below? So reciprocating compressor, van type of compressor, rotary compressor, root type of compressor and centrifugal compressor, which is which is uh, odd man out here. We have to identify because centrifugal compressor is the wrongly listed here because all the other type of compressor are positive displacement machines. Reciprocating compressor, van type of uh, compressor and root type of compressor they are positive displacement and centrifugal compressor is the non-positive type of machine. And we stop here. So these are all the books I published in mechanical engineering and I upload the video lectures of uh, all the subject in the YouTube channel. You subscribe to the channel, use the videos for your better learning. Thank you for watching. We will meet again in the next video in the air compressor uh, with the problems from the Anna University question paper.